I have a deep revelation today and I want every man of God, everyone who is a Christian to give me years, give me your ears for the next five or 10 minutes, because this is very significant. The Lord revealed this to me when I was reading my Bible. And I think it's a very uh, um, important things to, to know what God in the spirit has allowed us as men, because these truths are important. And I'm gonna go back to the story of Jacob and I'm gonna explain a little bit, just give me two minutes, we go through this story, then I'm gonna crack it open what the Lord showed me about that story. It's, it's pretty cool, so when you see me, you know, a, a little bit vaping, on my, uh, uh, you know, uh, in my mouth, it's winter, and I, I came here in the woods. Sometimes I like going into the woods because it's quiet and I, and I, can, I can have a good time with the Lord in, when it's that quiet outside the noise of the city. So I'm in the woods here and recording this video. And let's go back to the story. We are talking about Jacob. Jacob went outside his family, his comfort zone, and went to a far city to go do life. And he did life for 25 years. And listen to me, as he was doing life, God blessed him. He became so rich. He had about those days it was allowed he had four wives and a lot of cattle and sheep and ram and whatever name it livestock a lot of it and he got a lot of kids as well out of the four wives he had just about uh 11 kids so he was a huge family and he was rich and he had a huge promise from god from childhood but he's far from his country say let's call that country or from his home and what happens is he sees this vision from God, God telling him, go back now, now that I've made you rich and I've been enriched you the way I wanted it. I want you to go back home to where you came from, to your father's place, because that's a place where I want to establish you as a, as a man or a father of all nations. But remember the first place in the first place, the reason that he fled his comfort zone or his family or, or his father's stead is because of his brother. He had not stolen, he had taken the brother's birthright out of hunger of his brother. And his brother was very angry and he had taken the blessing as well. So his brother was out to kill him 25 years ago. So he fled following his mother's uh, advice. His mother has advised him to, to flee. And now he has fled for 25 years and God is telling him, go back. That is a story in a nutshell. So the guy goes back and he reaches a place called Pethuel. Keep that name at the back of your mind and mine as well, because this is where the meat of the word is. He reaches a place called Pethuel. And the Bible records that he wakes up in the night because he's disturbed. He can't sleep. He wakes up in the, in the night and he's disturbed. And you know what he's thinking? That his brother Esau is going to kill him. And he's thinking 25 years ago, I literally swindled him out of his birthright and his blessings. 25 years later, I'm so rich. I have four wives. 11 kids and a lot of livestock and servants. I'm a huge guy, I'm, I'm a city, I'm a nation. And I'm going back to the same brother who wanted to kill me 25 years ago. And he's thinking he's gonna kill me. Not only is he gonna kill me, he's gonna kill my wives, he's gonna take my livestock, I'm gonna be ruined. And the Bible records that he was so distressed, the distress he was going through, he couldn't sleep. And he wakes up in the night, but goes back to bed. But remember, who told him to move? Who had asked him to go back to his brother's stead or his father's stead? It's God. But somehow, he's fearing for his life. He's thinking, Esau is going to obliterate me. I'm going to be obliterated. He's going to decimate me. Nothing of me will be left. Great distress. So, I ask you guys to keep the, the, the name Pethuel in your mind and in my mind. Pethuel, it's a place where he was greatly dis distressed. So let's define Pethuel for everybody, not just for Jacob, according to the Spirit of God. 
Pethwell is a place of great distress. Record that. We have all gone through a place of great distress. Record. Point number one. Place of great distress. Place. Perfect. That's recorded. But remember, it's God who asked him to move. He asked him to go back to his father's stead. But Jacob has this notion that he's about to die and be decimated. So he kind of like, because of the situation and situation in life and circumstances, he's thinking he has forgotten who asked him to move. The person who asked him to asked him to move is God Almighty so he would he, he won't have asked him to move move to his father's stead if God was not gonna protect him do you agree with that but somehow he's greatly distressed you know what happens in that night God lowers himself like a man and comes in the dream of Jacob and wrestles Jacob. He calls him in that dream to a wrestling match. But God lowered himself like a man. And he was like a man. God man. I'm going to use this word loosely. God man. He lowers himself into a man. And wrestles with Jacob. The whole night. The, the night. The, the only time that he got sleep that night. So we see. The Bible records that he prevailed. The whole night, Jacob prevailed against, against God-man. So in the morning, just before he woke up from that dream, he realized that this man who called me to a wrestling match, whom I prevailed against, is about to leave. What does Jacob do? He holds onto him and ask, asks, asks him not to leave before he blesses. He realizes I'm wrestling a man, but this man has the ability to bless me. He's a different man. He's not just a man because he was God lowering himself to a man level. He realizes he's got some blessing, though he prevailed in this wrestling match in the night. He ref refuses to let go. He refuses completely. And he says, I won't let you go until you bless me. Pethuel, we said first, a place of great distress. But now, second, this most important spiritual truth. It's a place of great pleading. A place of great pleading. Note that, write it down, keep it in the heart. Place of distress. But we see it's not only distress. It's a place of great pleading. I won't let you go until you bless me. It's a force. Force, yet pleading. It's a forceful prayer, yet pleading. What do you call that type of prayer? It's like you're forcing God to do it. But God, you can't force God as God. He lowered himself into your level as a man. So you can plead to him as man to man. And you're forcing this man, but yet not forcing, because he has a blessing you need. You're pleading. Forcing, yet pleading. Pethuel, it's a place of forceful pleading. It's, we call that in the Bible, supplication not just petition prayer repentance this is supplication it's deep i don't want to go into that because that's very deep but it's a forceful pleading to god but remember god had to lower himself to a man because let me just explain what god showed me in this one why did he have to lower himself you realize that some sometimes the distress that we have it's it's to us, it's a big issue, but to God, it's just foolishness or nonsense or non-issue. And I'm going to explain in the context of Jacob. Jacob was afraid of Esau killing him. But later in the story, when he goes to meet Esau and he's, he's, he's disturbed and trying to send some gifts, he's breaking his family and, and his life stuck into pieces. Into, into droves, several droves. So if he kills the first one, the second one, the third will escape and he puts a great distance. He's distressed and sends some servants with a, with a lot of livestock to bribe his brother. But we see that when his brother comes, he's not concerned. He forgot about the whole blessing issue and he, he, he embraces him and they hug and cry. So his distress was un, unwarranted. It was totally unwarranted. So what he thought was going to kill him was nothing 
In the eyes of God, it didn't even exist. But God did not ignore his distress. He had to lower himself to the level of a, of a man so that he can take the pleading, the forceful pleading. That's the meat of the word, as I said. For God to lower himself, it's oftentimes our prayers or distress are just non-existent. But we have magnified them to such a level that it appears to be, we create a mountain from an anthill. You know what I mean? It's just an anthill, but we created a mountain in our own, our own mind or our own imaginations. But somehow God allows us and comes in as a man god like a man and i said that's a term i'm using very loosely please understand in the spirit understand what i'm trying to say i know you understand perfect okay now we see one a place of distress but two a place of forceful pleading supplication what does god do in the third step in that night he allows jacob to prevail against against God as a man. So he wrestles God as a man and he prevails. And I'm going to bring the third revelation that I got from this. What does that mean? That means in the morning, God told him, Hey, Jacob, did you see? Yes, I'm going to bless you because you're, 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 I, I heard your, I heard your supplication. I'm going to bless you, but you're a, Remember your prince, go and read the story, who prevails against God and against man. So what is number three secret about Pethuel? It's a place where, where God lets you know who you are in him. So he has given him his identity. You're so distressed. You're acting like le less than a servant. You don't know what you possess and what you carry. So I just wanted you to let you know that you can prevail against God as a man. To show you that if you can prevail against God as a man, or term we talked about, you can prevail against any man. So God was just allowing Jacob to know his identity in him. So Pethel, it's a place where God lets us know who we are in Christ and what power we possess. And lastly, I'm going to bring in the fourth truth. If you know you can prevail against God, what do you think will happen? What do you think happened to Jacob when he realized, oh, I, I wrestled God and I forced him, forceful pleading, to bless me and he blessed me anyway. It gives you confidence. God is lowering himself to a man level. And letting us prevail in our prayer, giving us our requests, the supplication, the fasting, the, the, the pleading with God like a man. Father, I'm not leaving here until you bless me. He just allows us, allows us to prevail so that our faith can be built up. Do you get the point? When you know you prevail against God as man, your faith is built up. You know he answers your forceful pleading request. So you're able to build or build that faith so the next time you're gonna request bigger you had requested for a bicycle you pleaded God gave you now you have confidence I prevailed against God like a man he gave me the bicycle now I can ask for a Lexus and I'm not preaching prosperity I'm just giving you an example so you can understand but you need to prosper that's not the only gospel it's one tiny bit of it prosperity so if you ask God for a car and he gave you a Toyota. Now, you know, I prevailed when I prayed for. Oh, now I can ask for a Lexus. Let's talk about diseases. If you pleaded with God to heal you, to heal you of, of a common cold, now you have confidence that you can ask God to heal you of tuberculosis. True. If he healed you of TB, the next time at your pethuel, pethuel great distress, you know, you wrestled, you prevail against God like a man. You can ask him to heal you of cancer. It builds confidence and faith that God hears our prayers. And he's not distant. God in heaven, so big, immeasurable, he lowered himself to become like a man. That's the last revelation. 
and I'm gonna conclude and say, who do you think is God? Like a man, it's Jesus Christ. That's it. Craziest revelation of that story. Jacob wrestling a man. He did not understand fully who this man was, but he knew he could bless him. And God speaks through this man, so he understood. God, like a man, a God who came and became a man is Jesus Christ. Jesus allows us and answers our great distress and he allows us to fill him he understands us he understands us as a man because he became a man and was tempted in every way he knows our weaknesses he allows us to forcefully plead understand what i mean supplication and i will say the only time god did not allow man to prevail against him a pathway situation all of us have to come to a pathway area where we plead we're distressed but we have to activate the faith and wrestle with God like a man and prevail and get our request every one of you men of God women of God you have all reached that area of distress to God it wasn't even a request of prayer but he, you were distressed anyway I was distressed anyway get into the place of forceful pleading and God is going to allow you and build up your faith that's a God we serve and that's a revelation I wanted to bring but lastly I'm going to end on a little bit sad sorrowful state story and say the only time God never allowed a man at Pethuel to prevail was in the garden of Gethsemane the Lord Jesus Christ tried and pleaded at his petal, he was greatly distressed. Unlike Jacob, who got God allowed him to, you know, God allowed Jacob to wrestle him and prevail and bless him and say, okay, have it, you have won. God allowed Jacob, but God, at the pathway of Jesus that is in the Garden of Gethsemane, God refused to let man prevail and God prevail. But he did this just for you and me. God bless you. God keep you. Remember, we all have to get into a place of pathway. Distressed greatly, but plead and offer your supplication to God and do not let go until you prevail against God like a man. I hope you got the revelation. God keep you. God hears your prayers and our supplication. God bless you and keep you. Until next time. Man, do I love the woods. I love nature. Nature shows God. It's better than most man-made things. Man-made things give praise to man who made them, but nature gives praise to God who made it. <laughs>